Rub up your engines! J. Russell Finch says, how long do you think you'll make videos on YouTube? Probably with my very last breath. <laughs> Forever. <laughs> I'm having too much fun helping people out and getting to try everything out and not having to buy it like the new F-150 I had yesterday that I was filming for the uh, Tennessee gaming raffle that they were having. I'm having too much fun. I can't see stopping. You might end up seeing videos from me years from now or decades from now where I'm drooling I can barely talk. I probably will never stop and I like helping people out. I hate it that advertising is taking over all kinds of stuff and you even Google stuff and you get fake information that's paid for by people who put money into advertising. I mean, it's just you know horrible the things that happen like some of these uh, ideas that people want the right to repair their cars and then you see the industry has spent hundreds of millions trying to get those bills not to pass because they want to keep all the information for them. So they're the only ones that are legally allowable and have the information to fix your cars. I hate that stuff and they spend a lot of money. There's only one me so I'm going to fight it as much as I can as long as I can and I'm having a lot of fun doing it. Triumph 79 says, I'm looking to buy a 99 Ram 2500 V10 with 19,000 original miles rust free. Is there anything I should look out for with it being 22 years old and having low mileage? All right, one, I would want absolute positive information that says, hey, that's the real mileage. I wouldn't believe it. People buy big old trucks. They don't drive them 19,000 miles in 22 years. That's just, you know, unbelievable myself. I'd want to actual talk to the person who owned it, not, oh, well, this is the fourth guy. I'm the fourth guy who owned it. No, you can change the speedometer out, the dash. You can do all kinds of things to fake it. I would want positive proof that is real because I personally wouldn't believe it unless it was some old guy in a farm somewhere and then he's really old or he's died and the state selling a vehicle and even then I'd want to look into it but that'd be the only thing I believe because most people buy those big old trucks and they drive the heck out of them I wouldn't believe the mileage but if it is real you want to make sure that the seals aren't leaking there's not oil leaking transmission fluid leaking radiator fluid leaking because it's an old truck but personally I would not even believe that it's real because I've had people bring me trucks like that and I just laugh when I check them out with my computer and road test them it's like this thing's probably got 219,000 miles on it there's no way it's only got 19 but on the other hand I've had people bring me vehicles like that they said they had 40,000 miles and they were 22 and I'd said you know it seems pretty realistic that that's what's actually in them but you need real proof and have a guy like me check it out before you buy it because you're not going to fool a pro mechanic. Owen Klassen said would a 2021 Mitsubishi Outlander hybrid electric vehicle be a good choice for a plug-in hybrid SUV? I'm not a fan of Mitsubishi they've had problems over the years if you want a plug-in vehicle my advice is I would only buy a Toyota one. They have the technology down pat. They started with the Prius. They've made them for over 20 years. They know what they're doing. I personally would never buy one because I'm cheap. I buy them used. Used hybrids can be a real problem and I don't like the extra price. I would not buy one and when they do break they cost a fortune. Even the Toyotas everything breaks eventually. You're talking about buying a 2021 Mitsubishi. No, I'd buy a new Toyota if I was going to buy one. I would want a new one because then it could go a long time. I've seen Priuses with 250, 250,000 and they're still running okay. So I would not buy them. I would not trust Mitsubishi. I'm not happy with their products over the years. And I certainly would not want to buy a plug-in hybrid from them. It's extremely complex because over the years, Mitsubishis have all kinds of electronic problems. Matthew Yim says, can you negotiate the price of a car that doesn't have any problems, whether a private party or a dealer? Well, of course you can negotiate. Now, the problem is the market now with this COVID stuff has gone insane and you probably won't be able to get anybody to come down anything. But in normal times, yes. Now, all the car dealerships, CarMax and all that crap, Carvana, they're run by bean counters, they're big corporations, and they won't negotiate. That's one big reason I say I wouldn't buy one from them. They will not let you come down a price. If you say, oh, I want to pay less, they'll say, that's what this car costs. We got other cars, look at them, they cost less. That's just how they are. It's a corporate bean counter mentality. You won't be able to get them down. But private individuals, of course, you know, you can argue over anything. People think that cars are worth more money than they are. That's just the way people are. If you're paying cash, especially buying from a private party, you should always pay 
less. Pay cash, you pay less. Now, you go to those Carvana and stuff, they don't care. They say, oh, same price, cash or we loan you the money and you pay us monthly. We don't care. With private individuals, you generally can get more leeway, especially if they need the money now. Because look, say you're buying a $15,000 used car. The lots don't care, but they actually would rather have you buy it on credit than cash. But a private individual, no way. They're not going to say, oh, pay me $300 a month. No. And if you come up with 15 cash, not that many people can do that, you're going to get a better deal. So I always try to negotiate with them and explain to them that cash is king. Mika Hawk says, how long can you go with a clicking CV joint? You know, that's a very good question. I had a customer, Jeffrey, in Houston, Texas. He had a Honda Civic. His U joints clicked for five years. It was so bad. I could hear him three blocks down the street, clickety click, clickety click. He never fixed them and he sold the car and bought, and this was 20 something years ago, he bought a used Toyota pickup truck and this is 20 years later, he's still driving a used Toyota pickup truck. You can generally go quite some time. Just realize when it breaks, you can't move. That's the end because when it breaks, you have no more power going to that wheel. So it'll just spin freely and the car won't drive anywhere. Don't take a clicking one from Tennessee to California and back because you'll be stranded. But if you're driving around in town all the time, like I say, Jeffrey did it for five years on the Civic. Turbo says, Scotty, my friend wants to get an RX-8 as his first car. It's a good idea. He's studying to become a mechanic. Oh, it's a great idea for him. He's studying to be a mechanic so he can learn how to fix it as it breaks. They're cool cars. And they got those suicide doors in the back. They're kind of cool cars. That's the last rotary engine car probably that Mazda will ever make. And it was a dismal failure. They stopped making them because of low sales. They hardly sold any of them. They're nice looking cars and they're fast enough with those rotary engines. They're tiny engines. They put a lot of horsepower. But they're absolute crap gas mileage for a tiny engine like that. If he wants to learn to be a mechanic, great, get one of those. Then he can learn how to take them apart, put them together. The seals, the apex seals will wear out and they burn oil. Then you got to rebuild the engines. He wants to be a mechanic. It's a great car for him. He can learn how to fix it as it breaks. Mike Hart says, Scotty, I got a Passat. Way worse gas mods as poster. It drives smooth and runs good, but it burns fuel quick. I'm convinced it's the oxygen sensor. Could it be? Let me tell you something. Before you buy an oxygen sensor, take the mass airflow sensor out and watch my video. Make your car run better with a little spray cleaner. Clean it all out. After you take it off the car so you don't short anything out, let it dry, put it back in. If it works, that fixed it. Now, sometimes they just go bad and you need a new math sensor. If not, it could be the oxygen sensor. It could be a lot of things. To test them is a very, very hard thing to do. You'd need a freeze frame, oscilloscope, and a lot of knowledge of how to read waveforms. It's not simple stuff. If you try the cleaning and all that and it doesn't, if you want to guess with the oxygen sensor, but you know, I'd advise using original equipment when a Volkswagen stuff's pretty expensive. You might pay a mechanic like me to check it out first or if you want just you know guess but make sure you use original equipment don't buy a cheap aftermarket one made in china because that'll make it even worse i did that video in rhode island where a guy in his honda bought an aftermarket one it was worse than his worn out one then he went to a junkyard and bought the correct japanese sensor and then <laughs> fixed the car entirely he paid 10 bucks at the junkyard you're gambling with junkyard parts but hey it was only 10 bucks and it worked because it was the original one it wasn't some cheap piece of junk made in china now if you're wondering about self-driving cars especially especially the Teslas, you got to watch that YouTube video three unprotected lefts disappointing because you'll probably be disappointed how poorly the system works and realize that oh even old elon you know what he said after this thing has come out he says he warns the people who's using these to stay paranoid oh yeah just what you want to do spend a hundred grand for a car that's supposed to drive itself and then stay paranoid while the system's on <laughs> I mean, it amazes me the stuff that comes out of that guy's mouth. <laughs> And of course, the more complex driving, these systems are not going to be able to handle it. This man, Cook, who made that video, he tried a unprotected left-hand turns across the six-way divided highway. Of course, it's hard for people. Well, the machine failed it hard. It really didn't work well at all. And as usual with computers, you know, if you have even just use satellite navigation, you know how they're always putting you in these endless loops if something goes wrong, they just keep going around in giant circles. He tried a rush hour traffic right turn instead of a left turn, and he got stuck in a loop that that just kept going around the block a whole bunch of times. <laughs> <laughs> that seems to be the computer failsafe. If in doubt, just keep going in giant circles with this updated software. Believe it or not, and I'm not making this up, it comes with a warning. This may do the wrong thing at the worst time. <laughs> Those are Tesla's words. 
<laughs> the wrong thing at the worst time. Oh, what a great self-driving system. He said, it addresses most known issues, but there will be unknown issues. Please be paranoid. Those are what he tweeted. So, you know, I mean, I can't help but laugh at this stuff. It's just become absurd that the money that goes out, the things don't work right. And then they say, well, we're working on it. We're working on it. It reminds me of some of these guys I met ages ago in Seattle. They kept saying, oh, don't worry. We're working on it. Five years later, they're still working on it. The thing doesn't work right. I mean, sometimes it's best to just stop and realize this is not doable and walk away. If you've really seen a bunch of these companies, some of them had over a billion bucks thrown into them for the self-driving stuff. They walked away and said, no, it's not doable in the foreseeable future. So we're not trying it anymore. But if you do have one of these, I'd say you probably should listen to old Elon and be paranoid when you're using it. <laughs> So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.